Hi everyone, welcome to AIR, where we clear the air in the artistic world. Um, in today's episode, we are interviewing Adriana Lamantia. I think I said her last name correct. She is a beautiful person, a beautiful dancer and choreographer. I actually met her in a collaboration that we did at Red Fishbowl. I was looking for dancers and she reached out to me, so I was like, yeah, absolutely. Um, and we've been in the dance world just connected in and out so i thought that she would be a perfect opportunity um to add her to add her into our um, interviews so um we are talking about different topics especially like systems in the dance dance world and like systems in the college world and how that works and the fairness between what is right and what is wrong in the dance world we talk about tiktok which is hilarious um she does bring a lot of different topics up so i am excited to have her part of her mukbang and i hope you enjoy our conversation see you soon okay perfect <laughs> All right. Well, thank you, Adriana, for um, being here with me on air. That's the name of my uh, mukbang um, video. So I appreciate you um, for being one of the one of many artists to be on this. Um, so I'm going to ask you some questions um, mm -hmm. about like your life and everything. And then we also have um, food to eat. Yes, and it smells so good. I've been trying not to eat it until we started, but it smells so good. <laughs> <laughs> awesome, awesome, awesome. Did you begin your dance training or like when did that whole like dance come to your life? So as far as I can remember, my mom just like wanted to throw me into like the arts. So when I was around two or three years old, we tried out gymnastics wasn't the artistic route I was going for. <laughs> I wanted to dance more. So she took me to Laurel Valley Academy of Dance in Latro, Pennsylvania. And I stayed there till graduation till I was 18. And then from then on, I just kept dancing in college. And then look where we're at now. <laughs> cool, cool, cool. What college did you go to? I went to Seton Hill University and I got a Bachelor of Fine Arts in choreography and in um, dance. Yes. That's awesome. I don't know anything about Seton Hill, but I hear it's an amazing school. And it's yeah, a small community, right? Yeah, it's very small. It's in downtown Greensburg. And um, it's very new. Like the dance program and like the theater program was very new when I started. Um, and then my second year there, they actually built a new facility for dance. So it was kind of cool going from like the beginning of how they started introducing dance at the school. Okay. Okay. Cool. Cool. Um, I know that you have done many works in Pittsburgh, um, especially like in the YGP community. Yeah. Can you share about how you began that journey? So it all started after I graduated um, at Seton Hill in 2018. Um, I went to Pittsburgh Youth Ballet for a summer program. Um, I was teaching there, um, and then one of my ballet instructors named Vanessa Hadar. She decided to open up her own ballet studio up there on Pennsylvania Ballet Conservatory. And she was telling me how she wants to take them to YAGP and that they would need choreography. And ever since then, we started out with four girls who have never done contemporary ever <laughs> before. And then now we have, I have like 18 soloists now and two group dances. So it's gonna, it's, it's crazy how far those dancers have come in the in the contemporary community because ever since they met me, they've never taken contemporary before. Oh my gosh. The, isn't that yeah. crazy? Isn't <laughs> it though? And like you have them now too. So you're seeing them in a totally different stage than like when I saw them because they like it was it was rough. <laughs> it was a lot of it was a lot of teaching about levels and like movement because it's so hard to get ballerinas to like let go a little bit yeah. so like it's it's so cool to see where they're at now from where they started oh my gosh I and mean, isn't it crazy to see like young people just like excel yeah. like in in such a little time but like yeah that's what I was saying like it's kind of crazy this day and age now like these kids are literally 11 and 12 years old have made humongous accomplishments in their dance career like it's only going up from there and I think it's so crazy like what else more can they accomplish 
like you know Adelina won the Hope Award and like that she's only 11 and she's going to be 12 and it's just crazy to me that that's they're so young that is a very young age (laughs) yeah I've never like I know like with the YGP like and stuff like that like I never grew up on that like I know it was like a I don't know I went to ballet school but it was never like a thing to do like they never brought that opportunity but I'm like saying would, this too yeah it, but you would only see like only a few people like go into these competitions I'm like how do they like end up doing that but now with social yeah. media and everything like you could just see I was it. gonna say like when we started out dance this like wasn't a thing like doing these like humongous competitions and going there every single weekend like at Nuvo and Jump and all that stuff yeah. like that wasn't like a thing like we ever were I don't <laughs> think I was even accustomed to like I competed but it wasn't like like religiously like following certain choreographers and certain competitions like I've never I it's crazy what dance has come into now it really is because it never was like that for us yeah it's it's yeah it's a whole different animal especially in Pittsburgh as well like oh my gosh it's so up and coming in Pittsburgh it's crazy it's crazy so this food AJ made it's so tell them it's so good <laughs> well you did like, you, you I love it are italian and you like mm-hmm. pasta so i was like let's just stick with the pasta oh yeah oh yeah that's always a go-to for me it's so good it is it's really, it really, really good I was, oh. like, I was like we gotta go 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 he's like <laughs> oh it's really good from a fellow italian it's great eh that's <laughs> oh. good okay more questions um uh who was the most influential dancer to you as you were growing up as a kid so i remember watching michael jackson when Ooh. i was younger i loved him and like I'll never forget when he was doing his tour obviously I was too young to audition for it and it was in like London but I was so like convinced like I'm going to work with Michael Jackson when I get older obviously I can't do that now but the second person would probably be after he passed was Willabeast yeah and he's um a hip-hopper YouTube guy and even though I wasn't like I was hip hop, but I loved contemporary. I wanted to work with him so bad too. And then when I got a little bit older and we got into Jump and Nouveau, I really liked Teddy Florence. Um, and um, oh, what's the other man's name? Teddy Florence and then Curtis Sprung. Oh. I was really close with Curtis Sprung because I was in Dance Masters of America and he was Mr. Dance Master when I was younger in Ohio. Uh-huh. So like he influenced me a lot too. He always gave me like, scholarships at the conventions with him so like we always bonded like that so like he's been a very big inspiration for me so it's been a lot of different people throughout my life but they all stick with me that's awesome oh my god yeah that's so cool didn't know that (laughs) yeah it's kind of crazy because like to see where he started like I was looking up to him at Dance Masters in Ohio and then all of a sudden he was in Cirque du Soleil in Las Vegas and then now he's working with one of my favorite people, Teddy Florence, and they're at Jump now doing all this stuff. It's so cool. And then he was on so, um, so You Not So You Think You Can Dance. What's that other one? America's Got Talent? Is it that one? No, the one with J-Lo. Oh, Worldwide Dance. Yeah, that's where he was. He was in that. <laughs> he was actually a finalist in the world of dance, yeah. Oh, my gosh. All these, like, TV shows. <laughs> I know. There's too many. But it's a good thing. It's a good thing because like, oh, yeah, the for world sure. needs to see. They need to see. Oh, what yeah. But I, I feel like with, with those TV shows, I feel like they're not accenting enough on artistry. Okay. And it's just tricks. Like, I've noticed that um, mostly just with World of Dance, obviously, because that just became really popular in the dance community. But when you're watching, it's like there's no, like, there's artistry, but it's not dance. Like, they're doing flips and turns and jumps and tricks and it's like I don't want to see that and I know that's what like people who don't understand dance want to see but it's it's more than just that I feel like that's some concept that we're having trouble getting at least to young dancers that I teach yeah is they think they have to have all these tricks to be 
great dancers and they have to have their leg up to their head and it's it doesn't have to be like that and and like they're producing great performances in those shows like they're doing great things yes but i do i also see the point where like okay we got to see a little bit more than just i mean a triple pirouette into a back handspring like (laughs) i need to see more than that (laughs) yeah 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 i mean i don't know like these kinds of personalities they are i mean they're influencers so they're pushing that kind of um television out there but how do you feel with like tiktok and like like (laughs) i just had a talk i just saw um a discussion one pittsburgh hip-hop dancer um posted something saying like you know all these young kids doing these tiktoks are becoming famous in the dance world when there's actual hardworking dancers in the community that are not getting recognized at all tiktok to me is not dance it is movement (laughs) it is movement they are doing choreography but i don't see that as i think that's an artistic expression yeah i don't see that as dance i think it's kind of crazy like good for them make your money like get where you need to go that's fine but don't don't put yourself as a dancer i don't see that as dance at all i just think it's kind of frustrating with like you and me like we work so hard to get or or work out there and what we do yeah you know a degree. and a degree and like this this 16 year old who did like the renegade is like making two million dollars off of tiktok like it's just it like yeah she dances but that's not a, that's not dance <laughs> it's like it's so crazy to me it frustrates me i feel you i i i keep asking everyone about this and they all everyone has some sort of similarity to that answer yeah. it, i mean yeah like it's pushing dance to a whole different direction, but also and it's like, new atmosphere. But it's not. It's more than that. <laughs> yes, yes, hundred percent. Because these kids are like, this actually happened recently in the summer at another studio I teach at. They said, "Oh, my daughter watches TikTok and she wants to learn how to dance." Like that doesn't correlate. That's interesting. <laughs> That's so cool. yeah. They they would take hip hop, thinking it's like the TikToks they're learning. Like we did like a hip hop camp and they thought it was going to be like a TikTok thing. And I was like, no, I never put this in my dances. Sorry. (laughs) No, no. And this girl's like, this this dancer's like 10, 11, never taken dance before. Good for her for joining. But like, she thought it was going to be like TikTok. (laughs) She expected all these moves. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And it was just not, was not it. (laughs) Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Well, yeah, it's it's insane. It's insane. It's it's drifting in a good way and a bad way. <laughs> oh yeah, and it's um, kind of crazy that like the said TikToker, she is working with like Brian Friedman. She's with Break the Floor, and it's just who, so frustrating because this? there's these Charlie D'Amelio. Oh, that's she like was that doing. Thing. Yeah, she was like the girl that's um when Break the Floor did their virtual classes and like jump and stuff. She was like the assistant. And I mean, she killed it, but I'm like, where's our junior best dancers from, uh, like, the people who win all those big competitions and, like, all these other, in, like, dancer influencers on social They're, media yeah. who are, like, so beyond their years and you're picking some girl off a of tick. I mean, it's mar- It's a good marketing It's decision, marketing. But, like, that's literally all it is, is but marketing. Is it- yeah that's basically what it is for everything in life if you think about it too like you know they're just trying to push in the numbers they're trying to get the views and money into Mm -hmm. that but yeah i don't know that's really interesting i feel like they should have hired like an actual actual dancer dancer. i mean i don't know is she a dancer dancer she danced she did competition dance so she she can move very well but all she's doing is tiktok and people are trying to like say oh she still competes i'm like no She's in LA and doing TikToks. <laughs> She's not. I never heard of her even in the dance world until TikTok became a thing, right. and then you learn that she's done dance. Yeah, yeah. Oh my god. Yeah. It's yeah. Crazy. It is so crazy. <laughs> so funny. Like more. I could talk about that topic for hours. I get so annoyed. <laughs> like, know, right? I'm like, all they're doing is twitching. <laughs> they're doing a body roll, and then they get like. I, I keep likes. saying. I keep saying it's like improvisational dance for regular people. Yes, yes, for regular people. Mm. Okay, talking about like dance and improv, do you think like people that go to clubs 
like club dancing do you think that that's like a kind of a improv movement yeah I don't think so I mean it might not look as good <laughs> like I think when you instantly said that I think of like when the bars were open and uh me and my boyfriend would go out to the bars and all his friends would be dancing and I'm just looking at them like what is this? I'm like, what are you doing? But it's like so funny because like that's how they move. Like me as a dancer, like watching someone move that does not dance ever. It's so <laughs> funny to me. But I feel like I feel like, yeah, that's a type of like it's a type of artistic expression. It really is. So I feel like that kind of dancing definitely is type of like improv because you're not there's it's no like, set choreography. Yeah. It, it, in in you're like in a legit studio with lights and everything. <laughs> with music, yeah, so, you know. Hair free, you know. <laughs> Exactly. I mean, I just can't whip out an aerial in the middle of the club. <laughs> so cool. That was one of my questions. I, I haven't asked anyone yet, but okay. Um, <laughs> everything like being online and like YouTube being like a success, how long do you think that YouTube will take over or overall just take over television? Wow. Do you think? I never thought of that. I actually never, but now you're making me think. I'm like, am I going to lose my job? (laughs) No! (laughs) It's like, they're going to have all these professional dance studios on YouTube teaching. That's what's so crazy. I feel like coronavirus was like a bad thing for, but also taught us a different way of how to teach. Uh Uh-huh. So... But also, in a way, these kids are thinking to themselves, okay, I'm stuck at home. I'm going to go on YouTube and learn how to dance. And then they want to go to a studio once COVID's over. And it's just like, they're not, they didn't get taught anything in the right sense of what dance is. So, like, it's kind of like a good and a bad thing. But, like, I feel like YouTube is definitely going to start taking over some type of, like, platform. Because... I mean, they've been doing that for a long time. They have all these influencers on YouTube, and now you have these ballet instructors putting up all these stretching and technique classes on YouTube. And I mean, it's almost like CLI studios. Yeah. You know, you can go on CLI and like learn from professionals like and stuff like that. So I feel like, yeah, YouTube is definitely going to start taking over soon. It's It's, it's coming. It's coming. (laughs) It's coming. (laughs) Did you ever... Have you ever, like, done anything on YouTube? Well, you have a YouTube channel, actually, right? Yeah. yeah, I have my YouTube channel. I upload all my work that I do for, like, different studios and, like, YGP and stuff. Um, and I also have, like, you know, my choreography reel and, like, stuff like that. But other than that, I, I never really got into, like, the YouTube, like, like talking, like, talk like, yeah, shows to the camera. Like and, like, <laughs> yeah, and, like, um, uploading classes and stuff because... I don't know I just never thought to do it but I think I should have done it over summer because I did so many classes over summer on on zoom like through just myself yeah and I had a lot of success with that so maybe down the line I'll start thinking about doing that depending on COVID I mean like every I don't know what's gonna happen I know (laughs) like if it starts getting bad again I'm literally just gonna have to just do YouTube and find a way like lot zoom classes again and yeah figure it out (laughs) It's Crazy. like your, it's like your own independent work, you know. <laughs> yeah, it really is. So it's convenient. It's like a second job. <laughs> yes. Okay. Um. How? Oh, is there a collaboration that you have been in in Pittsburgh that you loved absolutely, and what is that one? <laughs> so the collaborations. Um, probably the best opportunity one I've gotten because the other ones were great experience, but the opportunity itself was kind of like less than professional than what I'm used to. Like I didn't get paid, of course, but like, I mean, uh, there were, it it just didn't work out in a way that I thought I got anything out of it. Um, I actually did, I was a backup dancer for Natalie Sugar, who is um, a singer around Pittsburgh um she was doing the midnight monster party on halloween i think it was two years ago or last year it feels like it's been forever but i think it's just (laughs) covid (laughs) um i thought that was a really fun experience because um not only was i getting exposed to a different way of like in the industry because we were doing a music video that day too so i've never been in that kind of environment before and learning a dance and like i felt like i was 
Abby Lee's dance studio. I learned to dance in like two days and I was freaking out that I was going to forget everything. Oh so God. yeah, we had two rehearsals and it was um, two and a half hours long, but then I would stay, we would stay a little bit longer and go over it again. But I thought that was really cool because that's like how the industry is. You learn to dance and then you like go on stage. Yeah. <laughs> so honestly. I thought that was a very good opportunity because we, co- I, I think the only, how did I get spotted for this? It was on Instagram, this girl named Jessica, she was the choreographer for it, posted something, it was either on Instagram or it was on Facebook, and I instantly saw it and sent out a message, and um, got asked to be in it, Amazing. so I thought that was really cool, because I feel like people think they need to have, like, an agent, or, like, be a part of an agency um, to get opportunities, I feel like that's a yes and a no, I've gotten, like, mixed reviews from, like, people I talk to about that. Uh-huh. Um, they say like, oh yeah, having, cause usually those industry people, they know what's happening right. before you would. Uh-huh. So like say Justin Bieber's going on tour, you find out a month ago, they found out last year. Yeah. So they were already having dancers being picked for that. So like, I feel like it's a hit or miss because having, cause we looked, my dad and I looked up agencies and it just too much money and like you'd have to go to New York and back like twice a month pretty oh my much gosh. it's just it was a lot so I mean if you have the funds and to do it do it but like I mean I feel like if you just put hard work and dedication into what you want to do you don't really need it, it, to it's, do that it's literally you putting in the work and then whatever comes out of that is you know what you're producing and I feel like this generation this day and age doesn't understand that they get a lot of things handed to them even you know you? the the parents are like very good supporters for their children but they're not having them work to get you they know expect the, it they travis expect wall it. choreography and like going to jump at three different cities they kind of expect it they're not working mm-hmm. for it um i feel like that's a big thing too because i after like when i got into college and i graduated my dad's like okay now's the time for you to take what you learn push yourself to do it and i pushed every single day i took every single job It didn't matter if I was getting paid or not, as long as I was dancing. I feel like that's something, too. Kids feel like, oh, I'm out of college. I need to get paid for these things. No, you need experience. You need resume builders. So So they know, yeah. Yeah, and, like, I mean, some of us want – it would be nice to get paid to be dancing, but, like, in the Pittsburgh area, that's hit or miss. Why do you you think that is a hit or miss in the Pittsburgh area? I think right now – all these people that are starting up, all these, especially you, like mm-hmm. your movement and like Heidi's, Heidi Murr's move, movement of dancers, I feel like it's just starting up. So they don't, it's not like they're big, big companies that are like, oh yes, we want you. Like, I feel like dance is really just starting in Pittsburgh. I feel like it's, it. we have PBT, but it's just starting. It's start- but with COVID, yeah. it's like making it go back down to beginning all over again. So I feel like it's just, it, it's not like we're LA, you know what I mean? It's not like anything like that, but I feel like we are up and coming with like the dance and like paid gigs, hopefully. Yeah, definitely. I, I've also seen that as well. Like for me, when I was like coming into Pittsburgh, like I, I had no idea, like the arts, like, like, mm-hmm. you know, regular art, regular music, all that. I just didn't think that it was like the big place to be because you know everyone's like oh you have to move to like the big apple because that's where everything mm-hmm. is at yeah but in reality like I'm just now getting to know like Pittsburgh is very small but it has a lot everybody of everybody knows everybody mm-hmm. yeah and I like that and it, it reminds me of like Charlotte North Carolina with their like dance community as well like it's a mm-hmm. growing city it's a growing community and I feel like yeah. we're we're getting up there especially with dance because I know like Pittsburgh is very big with their filming with like the art scene with Andy Warhol so it's like there's a lot of history (laughs) in yeah and it's kind of crazy because everybody like I'm connected with including you was through something in (laughs) Pittsburgh like I knew Bianca through Pittsburgh because I took a hip-hop class and she was there I met you through YIGP and like ballet and stuff like that so I think it's crazy like I I feel like even younger kids in this generation need to know now, like the person next to you and you're probably going to see them again in the future. (laughs) Yeah. In the future. And you need to have everyone have a good impression of like who you are 
Definitely. I feel like attitude is definitely a big thing, at least with all the studios I've come in contact with. Attitude definitely is something that these dancers need to work on. Uh-huh. I feel like they, they have the attitude like, oh, well, I dance seven hours a, a day and I know what I'm talking about and your choreography doesn't make sense and I I don't get it. And like, I feel like kids these days need to be just like humble, humble. Get humble because guess what? When you go to an audition with 600 dancers to work for a cruise line, mm, that's gonna humble you real quick. You're gonna be <laughs> You're out gonna be out the door. <laughs> you might with not no even job. make it the first cut with no job. Exactly. It's crazy. Yeah. It really is. So that's one thing. And it's not every studio. It's not every child I've worked with, but it definitely has been um, something I've noticed enough. Okay. So, um, uh, what, what I got interested with what you were saying were like the agency. So I never really like when I was in college, no one really talked about being part of that. You know what I mean? I don't know. Why do you think like undergrad programs don't force that or like even like freelancing? Mm -hmm. Like they always said, yeah, I don't, I don't really know. I feel like Seton Hill was so up and coming with dance. It was so new. And I feel like my teachers, they, they taught me what they knew. I mm-hmm. don't feel like everybody's up with like the new things. I feel like we were pushed to go to companies or um, professional gigs or cruise ships. That's kind of what they were focusing yeah. on or like Disney. And I wasn't about that. Um, I really wasn't like, I wanted to do things like that but in the end I just started teaching and that's kind of where I stuck and I'm fine with that too but I feel like yeah I just that's a really good question I'm really not (laughs) sure I feel like I feel like they think of the big things Uh uh-huh they're not thinking of like oh what if they don't make it there they just say okay if you don't make it there you teach like it's nothing like oh you can start this company you can do film on dance or like I feel like that was never pushed as much as like going to auditions for cruise ships yeah which I was never wanting to do I never (laughs) wanted to go on a cruise ship I'm afraid of open ocean (laughs) oh my god it was not for me but I feel like it's just the knowledge like keeping up with the no because you know all these teachers were um at least at Seton Hill they were older and like not super old but they were older and like they taught us what they knew right that's how it was such a new program you know it's like I know like whenever I was like they were asking us like so what what are you planned like I still didn't know what my plans were like there's so many pathways that you can take in the dance world so like when I mentioned like oh I could probably like freelance they all like were like oh that's like super scary like it's gonna take you a while to do that but I feel like that's more of a mentality kind of thing kind of like you were saying like you don't really need an agent to tell you where to go when to go Mm -hmm. if you could just find it yourself I feel like you get to know more people once you put yourself out there by yourself right and you're very persistent like the only reason I got the jobs and the opportunities I was given is because I reached out like I didn't wait for something to come to me I pushed myself onto them yeah and I feel like if you're with an agency you're just putting your whole trust into an agency that has like 600 people they're they're like employing so I feel like freelancing is so much better because you're putting yourself out there and you're learning reje- and you're learning mm-hmm. rather than you getting a call from your agent saying oh you didn't get the job but like why didn't I get the job you know <laughs> what I mean so like why why won't you hire me yeah good okay do you think that um company like company lifestyle in the future will will, like succeed after what's happening or do you think like um how am I saying like will there do you think there'll be more money in the arts to provide for these companies that's something that's really scary to think about because you're reading all these posts about these companies closing like Oh, which one was it? They closed their doors and these people were like, I, that's been open for like 80 years. Like it was crazy. Mm-hmm. At least that's what I saw on like the Facebook page. But like, 
I feel like people are going to want to go back full force, but they're not going to have the funds to do it or they're not going to have the money to pay you to do yeah. it. So, I mean, I'm hoping it comes back full force, <laughs> but with everything that's happening, it's kind of, it's kind of hard to say. I know it's kind of scary. Like even for it like is. education, Broadway isn't even starting until twenty twenty two or something like that. Oh really? I thought it was like the yeah. end of twenty twenty one. But oh my goodness. Yeah, it's crazy. Like but then you Broadway have is going to be such a dying. It's going to die off, unfortunately. Yeah, it's, it's so sad because all these people. Just imagine you got picked to be in Hamilton, and then all of a sudden COVID, like. It's just so, I feel so sad for everybody in New York right now and, like, all those employees, employers, because those people are out of a job for good. Like, even they're like gone. the peop- Even the people who work in, like, um, technical things, like the theater, like, all the, like, the Yes, the definitely those people, because where are they going to go? Their whole job is set and on stage, and if there's no stage to do that for, <laughs> what are you going to do? Yeah, it's, it's, it's a very scary thing. It's so sad. <laughs> with with that being said do you think like you know like with sports you know Pittsburgh is very big on that like they're continuing with their yeah, football. Yeah. so what do you think about that and like dance I like... find it extremely unfair my little sister plays basketball and there is 12 girls on a team that touch the same exact ball that are at practice together with no masks on and they can have practice three days a week and go to games on weekends. But I can't have a classroom full of like six girls spread out with masks on. It makes no sense. That's so it's so ridiculous. You can have people at the Pittsburgh Stadium, <laughs> and you can't have a dance studio open. It's yeah. It's just it's so. It, we shouldn't even be in the same category. They put us in the same category as gyms. We're not in that category at all. We're our own category. That's true. I, I like that. So, it's so unfair. It's so unfair. Like, where I teach on Fridays, I only have five girls in the class. Only five. You can easily and spread them out. <laughs> easily. And I can't do that? Like, come on. I don't see it's it. It's just you know, ridiculous. The respect towards the arts is not, like, there. <laughs> it's never. It's never been there, though, let's be honest. Like, it's never been there. You see these schools that are closing off all their musicals and music programs for a bigger stadium yeah for another workout room let me tell you it, <laughs> at my university <laughs> they took a studio that we were using to add a exercise science like workout mm-hmm. room it was basically well, this a workout is kind of what room. happened at Seton Hill they bought they made this new building downtown and it was supposed to be for dance and like arts. Oh, cool. So we were thinking, okay, one side of the building is going to be all dance and the other side is going to be all arts, like classrooms, ceramics. No, <laughs> we still get the crap end of the stick. We get three studios that are surrounded by classrooms. So these people who are in the art programs like graphical design, um, special education, and um, art, any kind of art program. They're surrounded by they can us hear you. and our students, so they can hear us. Exactly. So we had to deal with teachers complaining about that. We oh had to deal goodness. with um, not having any studio space time because there was a academy program that was there as well. So oh in the God. afternoon, they would use the studios. <gasps> So yeah, that's, would, ha- yeah. that's what happened to us. They would like they ruin would the floor. The they would ruin, ruin the floor. They, the, and there would be after class programs for like um, graphic design. They'd have night class, and they would get mad because all the little girls would be stamping their feet on the tap on tap shoes on the floor. So it would be distracting to them. And then our student run program. So we would have our fall dance concert, our student run concert, and our um our spring concert. We had to wait until their classes were done to do everything for us to have. Mm-hmm. That's not fair. It is not right. So like, it, it doesn't matter where you're at. Dance like anywhere. Get the crap end of the stick everywhere. It could be in college. It can be anywhere. And like, unfortunately, our instructors didn't really have a choice. They didn't really have a say. And it kind of sucks because the person who ran the whole program 
it was there was not a head of theater and a head of dance. She ran both. <gasps> she didn't know she didn't know anything about dance. She only knew theater. So how does that she did work? Not know anything. So how does that work with like education? Exactly. Like that also they would not of... hire new teachers. I only had two faculty members my whole entire time there, like main faculty. They would bring in people every semester and then they wouldn't keep them. So this also kind of makes me feel like is even like is even like undergrad even worth it, you know? I mean, in the and beginning, I worse. it's like all these people, the adjunct teachers they bring in, we would learn so much from them. Like I had Kim Clay, I had Nicole Slavin, um, I had Vanessa Hadar. They were adjuncts, so they would come in and teach. <gasps> That's amazing. Mm-hmm. They would come in and teach for like the semester, but they wouldn't keep them. And we were learning so much from them. It's hard to learn from two people your whole entire four years. Yeah. Because you're learning, like, as much as they want to teach you something new, you're not really getting taught anything new because it's the same people. So you know how they teach you and you know what they're going to be choreographing. And it's, like, constant, like, the same exact thing. Systematic. So we have these, yeah. And once we'd have these new teachers, the school didn't want to pay to keep them. It wasn't fair it for was you just, either. It was not fair. <laughs> it really wasn't. Oh my god. It wasn't at all. And it's so upsetting because like my school had so much potential to be just so amazing if they would just hire more people and they never did. Never did. I don't know what they're doing now. I don't know if like these people they have now are adjunct or not, because I haven't been there for I haven't been there for three years. So I don't know what it's like <laughs> now. But I know all the problems I had to go through my four years just to get what you wanted. What, you know? what I wanted. And then they get, you know, going to like millennium. We'd go to Millennium some days. They oh, didn't cool. like us going. They didn't like us going outside and doing stuff. <laughs> so, it, yeah, I, that, uh, I also would... Because uh, they want to get the credit. They yeah. want to get the credit for all the work. But why do you, why, why do you, like... I feel like that's, like, a dancer thing. Do you, do you <laughs> agree? Oh, I don't know if you agree yes. with that. Yes, 100%. I don't, it's, like... I don't understand. Like you, you, you have a community, but then you want your community to just stay within the community. But it's like then- some studios are like, oh, okay, if you're gonna train under us, you can't go train anywhere else. But that's not fair. <laughs> but that's not fair. <laughs> like I'm jealous of these girls that like go to the ballet conservatory and go to the competition school and they go to gymnastics and they go to voice. Like I'm so jealous. Like I never had the opportunity to ever do that because it was kind of taboo back then for us to train at two different studios it's kind of taboo you stay at your one studio and that's it but that's like again it's like a systematic way of how to control a dancer because you know dance is a very it's a very and because they're so it's so like oh that's my dancer I trained them but really that's that's kind of like what's today's day and age in dance competition I see it's like that's not correct because you have one dancer who gets choreography from that studio uh-huh. and she doesn't train there. She gets choreography and she trains at another school. That teacher that gave her the choreography is trying to say that she trained her. And that's, I don't like that. I don't think that's not correct. If you go to a studio for choreography and choreography only and you don't take class there, you're not trained. You're trained at <laughs> the studio you get training at. <laughs> also, you don't own anybody to be saying. No. <laughs> no you can have it on a contract but like whatever with that but like come on like that's that you're hindering your dancer to become better yes having having one teacher their whole entire life isn't helping them it's actually hindering because if they only see one way of teaching and learning there it's going to be so much harder for them to get taught by somebody else and because they only know one way they're like no this is right this is the only way (laughs) yeah Yeah. right and then that was kind of my problem because when I got out of like high school and I was in Seton Hill it's crazy how much I learned because I thought I got taught everything right 100 percent. like I was like I'm the best I go into my 8 a.m ballet class and I'm like oh my god what is I feel like I didn't learn anything like I go there and I'm like oh my god I have so much to learn (laughs) I have so much to learn but like yeah so that was kind of that's like the wake-up call I'm seeing is like I hate that people can't go to someone else and like learn something get trained like not training I guess but like work with other people I don't I don't know if people are afraid to be open but I like I don't know I know that when I was a student 
it was like really weird to see like oh that person went to that place and they would like talk about it and I'm like why is that such a big deal like let her be (laughs) or let him be like they're succeeding they're succeeding if I mean they're probably I think that's just the cattiness with dance too and it's like such a hard field like there was so much cattiness at mine too like they'd get mad that they're going there and then being here if they have the time and money to do it go do it <laughs> like yeah, especially that's now. I, like, I had money yeah exactly I, was like, a- I have the money to go take class from a master teacher I'm going <laughs> like I'll go and now that everything is online it makes it way easier now like oh yeah you can join in and do it anyway but I feel like, like with those you kind of at least this is what I'm noticing with dancers since the competition scene and convention scene now like it's all online they don't want to do it because they're like they're not going to notice me on the on the computer screen anyway so why does it matter mm-hmm. no I can promise you when I judge or when I'm teaching a master class I'm watching everybody <laughs> like yeah I feel like all because you're not front and center doesn't mean nobody's watching you no everyone you got to watch everything <laughs> you have to watch everything and that's another thing girls are like well I'm not front and center so it doesn't matter <gasps> And, like, they don't want to do Zoom classes because they're, like, why does it matter? I'm not getting taught anything. But no, that, the, discipline, the discipline of dance is also changing. Like, what, I don't know, I feel like it is because it's not, like, sometimes I feel like it is, I, being on a webcam doesn't want to, like, have, yeah. like, have the same interaction. It does, It's mm-hmm. not the same vibe. So I can see why she is. It is. It, it, it's hard, but like if you want this so bad, you would put in the work. The class. Just put in the work and take the class. Exactly. If anything, that should be easier on you because you're not driving back and forth to the studio back home. You just get to shut off and go back to sleep or something. You know what I mean? Like it it's like college. Work. College. Yeah. College online. I feel like this. The everything being online. I keep telling everyone like, how's it, how's your school going? They're like, it's all right. It's just preparing you for this is, that's college. That's why I told my little sister, I was like, when you go to college or when you take college course classes, like, this is what it's going to be like. <laughs> You're going to be on your own. <laughs> exactly. So it is giving everyone that, like, individual um, mm-hmm. thing. Um, yeah. I also wanted to ask you, like, have you seen any differences from from working with, like, artistic dancers, performances, and like competition students and dancers like can you like maybe so this hard can you, like it is so describe? hard to get a competition dancer to be an artist dancer I started working for a studio in Bethel and I'm teaching their competition like level one team and it's so hard for me to be like do not do a trick <laughs> I want you to make shapes and I want you to move do not do a trick that does no you cannot do a pirouette no you cannot do your chin stand you cannot do your aerial or a grand jeté it has to be movement and I feel like it's so hard and it's I feel like it's easier to bring an artist to a competition level because you just need to like add tricks is how I see it. you just need to add a trick here and there they know how to move Right. For a competition dancer, they're so used to pop, mop, ball, change, turn, 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 jump. Like, they're not used to, like, movement and, like, dancing weird. So that has been, like, the hardest. Even with the ballet students, it's been so hard for me to get them <laughs> to move more. It, it's almost like I was like, you know what? I can only give you so many tools. Um, It's how you guys need to, like, interpret and, like, right. use those tools. Like, I said, I can only do so much, guys. I can't make you these dancers. You have to really, like watch yourself in a mirror that's one thing I tell these dancers look at yourself in a mirror put your shoulder up okay what else can I do I can put my arm over here okay how can I get my arm back over here I'm gonna hit my head okay what does I want to do so like I try and give them kind of like a little tool book I guess on how to like move it's so hard (laughs) though because they'll see these dancers who are like artists moving but they're competition dancers too they're like, how can I do that? I was like, you have to learn to move first. You got <laughs> to be free. to let go. <laughs> and that's something dancers, I feel like, are super uncomfortable with. It's like dancing different and out of what they already know. Because they're scared of being judged. It's also like the way like our teachers have ingrained like what should be the correct pathway of, where, of what dance should be and what should it look like. So when it, like, like I said, when I never grew up 
viewing competition. So that was never mm-hmm. crossed my mind. But now like seeing both sides, you kind of need both sides to succeed. Yeah, <laughs> you do. Unfortunately, you need the technique and the artistry. And the only way you're going to get yourself out there is going to a convention or a competition, having these people see you. And yeah. that's a, a lot of the girls that I teach at the conservatory, they're starting to see like, how am I going to get noticed? I have to go do these things. And I have to get out of my comfort zone and like yeah. take a tap class or like take a jazz class. Like they, they see that now, like you can focus in ballet, but you need to be able to do everything. everything. Yeah. <laughs> Cause I tell, I tell them I'm like the PBT dancers, they do contemporary work pieces as well with point shoes on so just think like they're not they're thinking oh she's such a beautiful ballerina but like what else is there <laughs> like you can be a beautiful ballerina but if you have nothing else but pretty lines and legs and turns what what else are you giving exactly you know? yeah <laughs> I just wanted to hear your input into that because you do work with a lot of the competition side so yeah cool. and it's it's kind of crazy because all like the technique girls want to start doing bigger competitions like not just like YAGP and I tell them I was like it's going to be so different it is going to be kind of an awakening <laughs> like of how much you guys need to like broaden your yeah. like, knowledge it's it's dance it's it's deep <laughs> it's so deep <laughs> like you think you got it and then like tomorrow you watch something you're like no I need more <laughs> yeah yeah um I don't want to keep asking you questions, but uh, I love it. <laughs> let's see, let me give you maybe like a, let's see. I like hearing new perspectives on things. Like these <laughs> questions are making me think. Yeah. Um, do you find it intrig- more intriguing to be a dancer or a choreographer? I've been actually <laughs> thinking about this lately because I haven't been dancing as much as I would like like this summer was supposed to be the year I was going to dance more like get my training back to what it was then COVID obviously you know happened and now I'm pregnant so I can't really do a lot you're pregnant oh my god I totally forgot about that yeah (laughs) we just found we just found out it's a girl too so like I'm so excited oh my god congratulations (laughs) thank you so that's little baby I know. <laughs> I know I'm so excited to get her dancing already <laughs> like, um, but yeah so like it's been hard like because now I feel like I'm even more behind um as a dancer but I feel like I have the passion enough to like get back to it so I feel I don't know I like the choreography aspect because I get to take like things I could never do okay and yeah. like put it on somebody that can actually do it and like put their leg to their head and turn because I could never do that but I feel like I feel like I can give more in my choreography than me as a dancer now. Okay. I feel like if I if I wasn't pregnant and we didn't have COVID, I feel like I could do a lot more for my choreography now. <laughs> but I feel like now, like what's happening with my life now and like with COVID, I feel like the choreography aspect I can like bring out more. Okay. Yeah, I like that. So what is one thing that you can't leave the house without? My Yeti. Your Yeti? (laughs) My Yeti. I can only drink water. Okay, so listen. I don't know why. I can only drink water if it's super ice cold. I can't.